Good morning, January the 8th, 2019 it is. Today I will discuss a few issues uh, in respect to this whole thing. <laughs> what have I managed to learn about it? Uh, I had incidents lately, like lining up one after the one after another that gave uh, you know something it was not a suspicion uh, it was already something that was completely clear about the whole case about uh, what goes on but uh, you know it did help me out to come up today this morning uh, somehow folks today I was left to sleep to rest myself it's amazing uh, when you don't get tortured at night with directed energy weapons, with radiation. Um, a simple cellular telephone can be turned into a deadly device, in case you didn't know that. Uh, if you have a power charger, whatever it is that you have, you can turn one into something really, really badass thing and it's not even big it can be very small uh, and if you repeatedly do the to individuals something like this for months uh, and along this you poison him with a chloride and you even occasionally use like real directed energy weapons like micro microwave gun or whatever they have used over there uh, believe me uh, it turns into a permanent effect and whatever was necessary from the beginning point uh, to exercise you know you no longer even have to uh, induce the same amount of radiation to individual to obtain the same effect you can decrease that and you still get the same effect uh, again it's got nothing to do uh, high blood pressure issues because uh, you know eh, uh, um, hypertension, high blood pressure issues uh, tend to pop up at night when people go sleep. It's true, but the thing about it is that when you are all bitten up in the morning, uh, when it's ringing in your head in the morning, uh, when you are woke up, uh, when you feel like you're rested, when you even develop uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and stuff like this, <laughs> Believe me, it's got nothing to do with uh, with the natural, with diabetes type of uh, high blood pressure issues or anything like this. Absolutely got nothing to do with it. It's got everything to do with something else, as I mentioned. Uh, this morning, beautiful morning today, I got sleep enough. Um charger which costed me the same as it will cost you a quarter of the salary let's say you get two thousand dollars pay that would be about five hundred dollars uh, along with um along with um a cable uh, i don't know how to properly say this right now uh which is used to charge the phone micro usb cable uh, a quarter of what you get paid it costed me I think 15 zloty we get 70 zloty here that's about almost a quarter okay maybe 40% uh, that's still a lot of money um, actually I'm sorry 25 25% that would be $500 let's say about 30% uh, 20% okay one fifth okay so that's still a lot of money. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do in respect to these issues, uh, it's a very simple thing. Uh, I will issue a state of the Poland a bill for the items destroyed. I will charge one with discrimination on European Court for Human Rights. And likewise on other courts. Um, we're dealing here with the Terry families, uh, Russian Chechen families, uh, of which all kinds of issues were anticipated they would produce in the city of the lawyers. 
uh, folks this town here Grotniki uh, is almost there is more lawyers here on a square kilometer than anywhere else in in Poland it's a city of the lawyers uh, just maybe about maybe th maybe 30 40 meters from here uh, is like this is Ośrodek dla Cudzoziemców, <laughs> Center for Foreigners. It's about maybe 30, 40 meters from here. Is like a center for attorneys from which uh, recreation center. They come here in recreation uh, to jog, to have a good time here. But when they retire, uh, very often they come here. They tend to stick together. And it's interesting how, on how many occasions I was prompted outside of the center uh, to take a racist view to see these people to to create some kind of a racist statement that it could be used against me uh, in the future I never thought about this stuff but this morning finally did popped up to me about what's going on really um, a type of behavior that is being displayed here uh, is like totally in line with a place where I am coming from uh, in Slovenia is the city of the Novo Mesto uh, the place would be it's not I'm coming from that place but from the city of the Novo Mesto it's like a settlement it's called Zabiak and what we have there is we have like a large settlement of Roma people now this Roma people tend to go and rob pensioners uh, when they get pensions they would pop themselves on a door on a front doors and you know force their way inside with with guns whatever they would terrorize children in the school uh, they don't allow kids to learn they don't allow kids to study they wait for them to go uh, basically to exit the school premises wait for them outside bid them up uh, ask them for the money steer their lunch uh, basically a lots of you know bad illegal criminal stuff uh, even the Slovenian state gives them uh, money funds uh, just to uh, be you know to live in the same way as other Slovenian people now the thing about it is that these people in Slovenia they are coming from a very poor background already in Yugoslavia it was it was just a poverty and a total communist ignorance is what it was it was uh, a total dementia and it was not only dementia for uh, Roma people but it was also dementia for people like myself normal people uh, the whole system was completely upside down uh, what was appreciated really was to basically to, to view to see yourself like a number not like a human being like not like an individual someone who can actually make the difference in this world that can do something about it uh, make a difference in his society whatever but just as a number what was expected of you basically was for you to pop up in the morning at your workplace and just stand there for about eight hours whatever you do uh, and then you get at the end of the month you get whatever you get uh, and that was about it and the system created really um, I think outstandingly stupid society across entire Eastern Europe it was the same here in Poland uh, and in Russia and in Ukraine and everywhere else it was outstandingly stupid uh, our, our architecture looked like uh, was really nothing to it because there was no effort placed in it because we should all look the same poor whatever uh, you had the car uh, you had a place to sleep and that's about it nobody cares about really anything else anything about identity anything basically identityless nations I would say and in these nations you had this you have all kinds of group also Roma group exploding uh, now these people wanted to live free they, they wouldn't want to go and take jobs anywhere they just 
or go to school or something thing. They just want to stay home. And if you go and take job and try to go to the school, they be discriminated by uh, by the people. Uh, it was a lot of you know hatred, all kinds of stuff. And surprisingly enough, uh, very very often from the communists. Uh, it was not. It would not even be necessary, you know, that uh, there would be some part of the society that would be different from other part of the society. The only difference between this so-called communists, they were not really communists. The real communists is in China, and China is doing very well. Uh, these people are just communists for convenience. I mean, because as a communist, you get a lot of privileges and stuff. You just, it was just a way to get around and get what uh, others would not be would not be allowed to get okay so uh these people how can i say oftentimes would come out as totally degenerated uh they would and they still do in some cases they still do they would search for the food in a trash can so rather than uh to go basically and expose themselves to the racism, to the discrimination. This is pretty much how I see it. And display very, very abnormal behavior, like totally, totally abnormal behavior. You want to see something really abnormal. Uh, I don't know about today, probably not even today anymore is the same over there. But if you would go maybe just, yeah, if you would go just like, Definitely in 2005, 2006, if you would go there, you would still see the same thing as it was. Um, then things changed. Uh, you had this U.S. diplomats, American diplomats, they applied pressure on Slovenian authorities. Uh, and they did start to uh, kind of see these people as also as a human beings, not as a... Um, Not as a thugs, not as a thieves, not as a criminals, not as a, um, you know, like a burden to society uh, in the same way, basically, as Adolf Hitler have seen it. Uh, to, to, to put it in a simple, uh, to put it in a simple picture, okay. So these people here have per Polish state. And why, why would these people do this for Polish states? Okay, there was all kinds of stuff anticipated. Okay, uh, they have a Polish state have gambled. Polish state have played with many, many all kinds of different issues. These people are connected to the Russians. They are connected to the Arabs, and they are also connected to the Polish state. And uh, they are also connected to the Germany and so on and so forth. They basically do whatever is convenient for them to do. Okay, they, It's like a large family, about maybe, I don't know, at least 23 families it is. If it's not more than that, I would say maybe even 25, maybe more families. I don't know how many. Um, it's like a big clan. It's like... Uh, like inseparable um, big ass family that goes around and do the stuff uh, which in my opinion is as is proven in this case uh, is supported by the governments um, in Poland uh, what happened between 1998 and 2006 uh, is just something I have never agreed with. I did not allow for any stuff like this to happen, to happen uh, against me. It's surprising. It's surprising that just 55 years after the World War II, something like this would happen in the Poland. This is truly is amazing. Uh, you you could probably imagine that something like that would go on in Germany or something like this, but it, no, actually, did happen in Poland. Um, I never allowed any of that stuff to happen. Uh, and so Polish government have hired these people <clears throat> for several reasons. One of the reason was, the main reason was that they wanted to get rid of me for what they have done in 
between 98 and 2006. One way would be basically getting me into the Russia. Another way would be getting me into uh, maybe even Arabia through Chechnya. Chechens, Chechens speak Arabic. First, it was everything in Russian. When, it, it's, when Russian didn't work, uh, when I didn't display any kind of uh, interest in, uh, in, in having to do with Russia, uh, the whole chain, the whole thing, all of a sudden changed into Arabic. Nobody wanted to speak Russian anymore. Um, look, if I would have done shit like this to somebody, uh, like Poland have done to me, then I too would be very much interested in somehow getting rid of that person. Uh, if one stuff would not work, another stuff would not work, and if the whole thing would not work, uh, maybe we can scream discrimination. And that when it comes to Borat Pahor, president of Slovenia, who was here, uh, who trained these people to display this kind of behavior right here inside of the center. I'm talking about behavior from Zhabiak Center, along with the thefts, along with uh, directed energy weapons they played with, heavy radiation. Oh. Just yesterday, the day before yesterday, I came back from library, and it was the same shit, it was the same thing. In the morning, the same thing. <laughs> in the head uh, all through I have to say that what was what went on uh, till I have realized uh, that it was about the chloride poisoning uh, this this thing cannot compare my situation right now in no way can compare with the situation I had uh, let's say two months ago a month ago three months ago because for like up to I don't know maybe three weeks ago my head was like ready to explode and you have no idea it's called uh, hot pressure whatever you want to call that like uh, you want to go and use pressure cooker and all the pressure that would build inside of that cooker and you can see that thing pushing out that um, a heat boy i was thinking that is gonna that my head is gonna explode literally that is gonna go like poof, like this and felt like i want to climb to the bridge and literally fucking throw myself down of the bridge you understand this is how it was you have no idea what it means to be poisoned with a chloride and uh, at the same time uh, simultaneously uh, attacked with these directed energy weapons. I mean, when you are bitten up, like 12 hours it takes for you to recuperate once you get hit with this shit. Uh, and along with that, you're poisoned with a chloride. You have no idea what that means. I'm not going to forget that tomato that they just bursted uh, when I when I when I bitten one and what happened how my head was ready to explode soon after and so on. Uh, you have no idea what that means and when you take this that they, stuff like this takes that goes on for months uh, this is a very difficult issue right now. Pff, I'm not. I am not experiencing anything even close to uh, to what I did. Once I did figure out what goes on, I have eventually even reduced to zero that sound in the head. Uh, but as much as I have reduced food poisoning to zero, uh, I can. <laughs> there's no way I can reduce. Uh, I I have any kind of influence in what is happening in the room. Uh, next to mine or uh, in a room uh, underneath and under MK Ultra they even play they even suggested they had something 
uh, in an attic area, something above. I don't know about that, but they did create all kinds of scenarios. They did all kinds of stupid stuff uh, to maybe for me to come up with uh, some kind of a claims like this, which I once I did, eventually I did mention that, but I'm not going to go beyond that. You don't have to go up on a roof uh, to do the stuff like this in an attic area. Uh, you can comf we can do it in a complete comfort from uh, from uh, from from the room right next to or you can do it in a complete comfort uh, I don't know from the distance of three meters or whatever it is it's very very easy thing to do uh, you take the radiation meter and and go like you have seen I have done with the telephones and you can see what kind of effect does radiation have doesn't matter what matters is that in a city of lawyers in a Grotniki, not even discrimination uh, on behalf of this 30 whatever whatever it is that they are families uh, it's not gonna go through but what we'll go through is gonna be a report today in the morning as soon as I finish this I upload this and then basically what I do is I go to the library uh, and I first thing I do I file the lawsuit against the Poland this is gonna be the number one thing uh, it's gonna be for all the items uh, stolen destroyed so go ahead and steal uh, from me for for me uh, you can go ahead and you can steal everything to me I have uh, I don't I don't mind at all uh, I have reminded myself of these people of these Roma people uh, over there in 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 Slovenia in the same city where I am from and I totally realized that uh, there is no way that you can go uh, in any kind of logic. Uh, even worse, if you go and you try to intellectually match something like this, uh, that you could prevent, that you could stop, that you could change your view or anything like this, there's no way. And the one who did this shit is really Varshaw. So this is not going to be only MK Ultra case, but we're also going to press the whole thing through through discrimination case and that basically uh, makes me wonder exactly how did these people uh, view me as a Slovenian individual from Slovenia I had um, I have to say I, uh, I I was very very angered with Donald Trump with Germany uh, with others that have done something like this uh, against me uh, as per my being a member of the Slavic society uh, not very very pleased not very pleased uh, with how they have proceeded against me and you know um, uh, I acknowledge that as a Nazism as a fascism as a Nazism uh, 40 million Slavic people were killed in the World War II alone uh, and so you know like I said uh, this this kind of stuff I wouldn't expect to happen uh, in Poland what happened between 98 and 2006 and right now when I think about uh, you know this kind of a stuff happening I'm also thinking about how exactly my view here is there were even Polish people here Polish people that with Mr. Kaczynski had obtained a very hard time issues about their own identity as per even being Polish. This is a very very deep problem and I think Warsaw has got some serious problems, some serious issues going on and uh, I just have to say that uh, this undoubtedly is a very very heavy discrimination very very heavy racism is what goes on here against me personally um, yeah it can happen like this too uh, I am a super minority here uh, I am here with another Czech lady and uh, with another Romanian guy the only the only European here 
uh, all others all others are from Chechnya, uh, Tajikistan, Russia, Belarus, um, it's a it's a totally uh, it's a totally different story and racism discrimination uh, can also be viewed like this I think especially should be viewed like this I don't think that president of the country where I'm from uh, had the right to train these people to uh, to behave in this type of pattern I don't think that psychologist here uh, that is employed uh had the right to guide people like this according to certain uh you know views ways that are really surpassing criminal behavior in a society so this is uh for me personally i see this as a um a very deep issue a very deep issue i don't have a choice but really see things, view things as, uh, you know, in a way like this. You can do the stuff like this. Um, it was really, really well engineered, uh, but it really, really failed everything in a city of attorneys. What I didn't ma uh, complete a little earlier was, uh, you don't have idea, folks, what it means to actually come and sit uh, just like inside of your room and be uh, you can do the stuff for yourself like study let's say like yesterday like in the mornings you're all messed up okay what happens is it takes few hours for you to uh, collect yourself together over there you go to the library wherever you do stuff uh, and you finally somehow collect yourself together and you go and you can actually read words and repeat them, study them. Um, and yesterday it just happened so that I was inside of the room. It was so strange. It was, it was so strange to be, to be in this kind of situation. I felt like it was like super, super strange. In fact, In fact, the harassments, the torture here at this place went as far as my developing fear. You know, it was yesterday I said to myself, it's really, really important that you don't mix issues such as frustration and fear with one another because the two are very, very different actually. Uh, under the circumstances like this, they tend to get mixed. You can e easily mix them up. You can easily mistaken them for one another because, you know, the MK Ultra when they do the MK Ultra, uh, they do it in a, such a way that uh, it's exactly what I have suggested. No matter what you do, it's never good enough. No matter what you do, it doesn't matter if you go from here to work. Uh, to Zgerjan food and you do the stuff and you do it and you do it and you do it they find a way to stop you and portray you as lazy and no good and uh, as pretty much crazy demented that your language skills are no good they do that through insults they do that through uh, you know uh, they try to do it through frustration through um, you try to do your best, and the only thing you get basically is slap in the face. And that's exactly what it was in MK Ultra when they would go through entire MK Ultra would be always it will always be because you don't you didn't learn enough Polish. Uh, we have to go. We have to go. So the idea was to basically psychologically break me to frustrate me, uh, and also. Uh, break me into believe that I just have to go with these people. I just have to go to Israel. I don't know. I just have to go from here. The courts over there are not on my side. Nobody's on my side. Uh, and they would repeat this. Uh, go to Russia and so on. They would repeat this shit like maybe on a hundred occasions, maybe more under MK Ultra. They would just say it like get in your face all the time and it was 
whatever you would do, whatever they have created situations, whatever situation you would do, it was all it always would end up regardless. That that's kind of crazy. I mean, uh, you start to believe that stuff when you do the first first when you would do the stuff like this. A lot of people would just get probably frustrated and it would be like, uh, okay, so now whatever did I do and then F it and then I go, whatever. Uh, there was a million other things too that they use, other issues, other types of issues with what I'm saying. But it starts like this and then it just go on and, but we have to go, but we have to go because your language skill is not good enough, whatever. And so... And so they, they, they create this kind of situation to, for you to totally mistaken, you know, for you to mistaking uh, fear with frustration. Because when you are attacked, when you are watched, basically when you study, when things go well, when you repeat them well, when you when your memory is functioning well, and for that matter, you get then heavily punished that same evening, that same night, and the one after whatever. Uh, believe me, you develop a fear, a sense of fear. You start to wonder yourself, if I will go and I will go and study and I will do this stuff, uh, then I will be punished. And a lot of people uh, with so many other issues, uh, yes, they would become frustrated. They would say, oh, you know, ba 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 But it's not like this in my case. You know, I take time. I like to take time. I like to analyze these things properly. And not even this type of zoo behavior uh, will distract me from uh, what I'm heading to. It was interesting to know that, what was it, what was it yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, okay, it was a 9.30 at night, and it all ended at 10.30, I would go, and it was the same thing under MK Ultra, the same thing, they would have these guys, and the only way, really, that you can get money for the milk, you can actually go and buy yourself a dairy product, which you need, because you don't get one here, uh, is to somehow get the money. And, 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 and don't forget, this time, uh, I actually had to borrow uh, extra uh, money to go to the trip to Warsaw, which these people would not even give me, refund me back expenses for the trip to Warsaw. So i still owe people here i i gave them whatever i had i gave them because i don't like to owe anybody not even a dime i am ashamed it's disgusting for me to go and back people for the money at age 47 u.s citizen from slovenia and i had to go and and back people for the money so i can appear myself in appointment over there in Warsaw. this is beyond disgusting but Warsaw doesn't know what disgusting is. In the city of the lawyers in Grotniki is here. They don't know what disgusting is enough. They just they just take whatever they can get. And so I had to go and do that. Uh, and I still owe the money. Uh, and the next thing you do is you go they would not answer i backed them i wrote them on a paper we faxed them that to the Warsaw. they would not even answer from there the only thing you would get is that you are not allowed to display your uh, aggressive behavior and aggressive means that you aggressively audio recorded a death threats and stuff like that okay so Oh, this is just beyond, beyond bizarre. Beyond bizarre is this whole thing, you know. I'm thinking about this. It's totally bizarre. And so these guys are the same like I would do. They have evaluated what, what, obviously what my step is going to be. I want to start to take online surveys so I could at least have money to go buy myself a yogurt or milk or whatever. Uh, 
and it's interesting uh, the same minute I started to take this online surveys uh, a roommate was in the bed a roommate went in the bed slept all of a sudden when I started to do this he got up and he went behind me uh, I am on an upper bunk he would appear on this side right behind me look at, at me what I'm doing of course he would not know what I'm doing if somebody would not signal him uh, you know uh, to basically n not I'm not gonna say go and see what I do because I he never does this kind of behavior he never display this kind of behavior uh, he just wanted me maybe for me to see him as as if he came and he saw it but the number one thing you don't just go sleep and you get up uh, then he would run on a hallway on a hallway it was like you know um, <laughs> you would have almost like when you, when you were in a jail in a prison you have all the prisoners they start to uh, uh, create noise and stuff like that, some kind of a protest. It's exactly what it was. You had all of a sudden you had children running back and forth, and they the, the talk started like a huge talk. And as I realized that, and all of a sudden laughing, because when I realized that, there must have been some kind of emotion on my face in respect to the privacy issues. We are monitored here. This room is monitored. They watch absolutely everything you do here. There is no doubt about it. And it was laughing, you know, whatever it was. And then it went, all of a sudden it went back to normal. But this shit happened at 10, 15 at night. Uh, it was already peace. It was already quiet about an hour probably that evening, the day before before yesterday and so you have all this shit at 10 15 they come out of the rooms and they do this stuff like this and they definitely let you know that uh, you're watched and so on and so forth okay so um there are other issues too uh i'm not gonna go into it but i have carefully reconsidered the whole thing uh, there are ways to even press charges against the European Union court for not doing their tasks, doing their jobs. And that's pretty much what I'm going to concentrate myself this morning. Uh, that's where we're going to go to. Uh, the charges against individual Mark Gohn, uh, of Irish Mark Gohn, uh, chief investigator at International Criminal Court, were filed also with Irish and Dutch police. Uh, I have also resubmitted complaint to international criminal, uh, not, not yet, uh, to the Interpol. Why? Because Russians penetrated my blogger. Russians changed uh, text in my blogger uh, in respect to support. It came all fuzzy, crazy shit uh, written down. It's got nothing to do with me. Uh, remember, whatever I write is very, very logical. Uh, but me being in this type of environment where Ruskis can actually even log into uh, my blogger account, whatever it is through a stolen telephone at night, whatever it is that they do, uh, is just uh, completely inappropriate, basically portraying me even like this is crazy through my website. Uh, modifying, deleting stuff like this. This is just not good, folks. This is this is a bad stuff. Uh, it's a criminal. It's a illegal stuff. And Warsaw should know better than that. Mr. Sikorsky mentioned. Uh, Mr. Sikorsky it was a minister, ex-minister, mentioned involvement in Poland, uh, American involvement. How they uh, Americans bought. I don't know. Uh, complexes they rented uh, premises whatever to uh, to to torment terrorists whatever uh, he mentioned Americans and so on he also mentioned Russians he mentioned how Russians offered 
uh, a deal to the Poland uh, in respect to Ukraine that Poland would get portion of uh, in his book portion of Ukraine uh, in return for assisting for uh, Russian aggression on Ukraine assistance of Russian aggression on Ukraine this is true what Mr. Sikorsky uh, stated is absolutely every, uh, everything he stated in his book is absolutely is the true. It might sound crazy, it might sound not credible, uh, but what Mr. Sikorsky have stated, absolutely everything is true. Of course, he immediately was discredited by the Warsaw, but absolutely everything he stated, uh, absolutely everything is true. There is much more true. The truth is that... Uh, in 2000 and 2001, Belarus state started to collect a special contribution tax money uh, for the uh, for the Russia for the Russian aggression on Ukraine, and Lukashenko could do, do nothing about it. If he would have said anything, <coughs> he would have been replaced immediately by some other um, by some other tool, and so this stuff is 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 kind of unbelievable but this is factual 10 15 years ahead of the war is when they start to collect uh, the money wars don't happen overnight uh, they're well calculated they're well prepared and uh, this is how things happen all this stuff is true the, the good thing however would be the difference would be really to consider also the situation you know he said Poland could be better yes Poland could be better uh, whatever uh, Russians get, uh, whatever whatever Russians get, and the Russians get way way more than that. They kind of own this country, okay. But whatever the Russians get in in Poland, Americans have to pay for. That's basically the only difference between the two. Uh, whatever Russians get for free here, uh, Americans have to pay for. Uh, so, uh, could uh, things be better? Uh, maybe things could be better if these politicians in Warsaw uh, would see Poland as Poland and not something as I have just uh, explained right here, uh, something not even Mr. Sikorsky dared to state in his book. Okay. So, uh, thanks for watching this video. Today is January the 8th, 2019. Bye-bye uh, from a uh, lawyer city known as Grotniki in your watch uh, in Poland. Take care of yourself, wherever you are. Till next time.